The IP address is a fundamental import concept to understand when discussing IP networks. An IP address identifies a network node or an interface on a network device. IP addresses are used for network communication. A host has at least one IP address. If a router has multiple interfaces, the router has the same number of IP addresses. IP addresses are also used as proof for network addressing. Here, we only cover IPv4 addresses. An IPv4 address is a 32-bit binary number in four octets. IPv4 addresses are usually represented in dotted decimal notation. In computation, IP addresses are still presented in binary format. The theoretical range of IP addresses is from 0 0.0.0.0 to 255.255.255.255. TCP IP defines five classes of IP addresses according to their address range and use. That is, class A, B, C, D, and E. The class E address range is reserved for experimental purposes. The class D address range is used for multicast addressing. Multicast addresses can function only as destination addresses, but cannot be configured for nodes. Therefore, only class A, class B, and class C addresses are valid to assign to hosts. IPv4 addresses are usually represented in dotted decimal notation, consisting of four octets, separated by dots. If the highest order bit of the first octet in an IPv4 address is set to zero and the remaining bits are not set, then the value range of the first octet is from 1 to 126. 127 is used for local loopback testing. For example, when the computer pings 127.0.0.1, the computer is pinging itself to check whether the IPv4 protocol stack works properly on the host. If the first two highest order bits of the first octet are set to 10 and the remaining bits are not configured, and the first octet ranges from 128 to 191, which is a class B address. If the first three highest order bits of the first octet are set to 110, then the first octet ranges from 192 to 223, which is a class C address. An IP address consists of a network part and a host part. Routers are concerned with only the network number and not the host number. In the class A address, the first octet represents the network part and the remaining octets represent the host part. In the class B address, the first two octets represent the network part and the remaining two octets represent the host part. In the class C address, the first three octets represent the network part and the last octet represents the host part. This slide introduces the network mask. An IP address and a network mask appear together in a pair. The network mask is used to determine which bits in an IP address are the network part and which bits are the host part. The length of a network mask is 32 bits, which is the same as the number of bits for an IP address. In the binary format, the first half of a network mask consists of all ones and the second half of network mask consists of all zeros. The bits in an IP address corresponding to the ones represent the network number of the IP address and the bits corresponding to the zeros represent the host number, as shown in the figure. 
The IP address 192.168.1.1 corresponds to the network mask 255.255.255.0, both of which are in binary format. It can be seen that the first three octets of the IP address are the network part, and the last octet is the host part. This slide introduces three IP network communication types. Unicast is one-to-one -one communication, PC1 sending data directly to PC2 with clear source and destination IP addresses is an example of unicast. Broadcast is unspecific, non-targeted, one-to-many communication. For example, PC1 sends a broadcast message that is flooded within the broadcast domain, but routers are able to isolate the broadcast message. Therefore, broadcast messages are blocked while arriving at the first router. On the Layer 2 network, the destination MAC address of a broadcast message contains all Fs. On the Layer 3 network, the bits of the destination IP address are all 1s. Multicast is many-to-one communication. In this example, PC1 is a media site, and PC3 and PC4 are media receivers. When multiple receivers exist while using unicast, sending the same data increases the cost of links and decreases efficiency since this information must be sent multiple times. Therefore, the multicast mode is preferable in such scenarios. The multicast source does not consider the number of receivers. The multicast source just sends data to the network, and the router chooses whether to forward the data. In this manner, only one piece of data is transmitted over a link at a time point, which improves bandwidth utilization. This slide introduces three types of IP addresses. The network address identifies a network number. Among broadcast addresses, 255.255.255.255 is the network-wide broadcast address. The host address identifies a host. Here, 192.168.1.0 is a Class C network address. By default, the first three octets of a Class C address are the network part, and the last octet is the host part. Therefore, the subnet mask of the IP address 192.168.1.1 is 255.255.255.0. In this figure, the network part is on the left side of the dotted line, and the host part is on the right side. The network address is where the host part is all zeros. Therefore, 192.168.1.0 is a network address. The broadcast address is where the host part is all ones. Therefore, 192.168.1.255 is a broadcast address, which is also broadcast subnet. Neither the network address nor the broadcast address can be allocated to a host. Only the IP addresses between the network address and broadcast address can be allocated to hosts. This slide introduces VSLM. The IP address in this figure is a class B address. On the network, there are 2 to the power of 16 minus 2 IP addresses available for allocation, forming a huge broadcast domain. However, the larger the broadcast domain, the higher the probability that network problems occur. Therefore, we try to minimize the scale of a broadcast domain. We can divide a broadcast domain into small blocks. Each block has a different network addresses. We can divide the applied network segment 
dot sixteen dot zero dot zero slash sixteen into several small network segments and allocate them to four small scale networks, achieving network subnetting. Therefore, one hundred and seventy two dot sixteen dot one dot zero, one hundred and seventy two dot sixteen dot two dot zero, one hundred and seventy two dot sixteen dot three dot zero. And one hundred and seventy-two dot sixteen dot four dot zero represent different subnets. This is implemented by VSLM. Here, one hundred and seventy-two dot sixteen dot zero dot zero slash sixteen is the subnet mask of the class B address by default. The IP address of the network ranges from. One hundred and seventy-two dot sixteen dot zero dot zero to one hundred and seventy-two dot sixteen dot two hundred and fifty-five dot two hundred and fifty-five, totaling two to the power of sixteen IP addresses. By moving the driver between the network bit and host bit rightwards, there is one more network bit and one less host bit. That is, the network part borrows one bit from the host part. This bit may be zero or one. In this way, two subnets are considered to be created, which are one hundred and seventy-two dot sixteen dot zero dot zero and one hundred and seventy-two dot sixteen dot one hundred and twenty-eight dot zero. The mask becomes two hundred and fifty-five. Dot two hundred and fifty five dot one hundred and twenty eight dot zero. The host IP address ranges of the two subnets are one hundred and seventy two dot sixteen dot zero dot one to one hundred and seventy two dot sixteen dot one hundred and twenty seven dot two hundred and fifty five and one hundred and seventy two dot sixteen dot one hundred and twenty eight dot one. To one hundred and seventy-two dot sixteen dot one hundred and twenty-eight dot two hundred and fifty-five, respectively. On subnet one hundred and ninety-two dot one hundred and sixty-eight dot one dot zero slash twenty-five, we want to work out the range of host numbers available for the subnet. First of all, this is a class C address by default. The length of a subnet mask is 24 bits. The current length of the subnet mask is 25 bits. This indicates that the network part borrows one bit from the host part. In this way, two subnets are formed. The calculation formula of the number of subnets is 2 to the power of m, where m indicates the number of bits that the network part borrows from the host part. Subnet one is one hundred and ninety-two dot one hundred and sixty-eight dot one dot zero slash twenty-five, and subnet two is one hundred and ninety-two dot one hundred and sixty-eight dot one dot one hundred and twenty-eight slash twenty-five. The broadcast address of subnet one is one hundred and ninety-two dot one hundred and sixty-eight. Dot one dot one hundred and twenty-seven, and the network address of subnet two is one hundred and ninety-two dot one hundred and sixty-eight dot one dot two hundred and fifty-five. Therefore, the range of available host addresses for subnet one is one hundred and ninety-two dot one hundred and sixty-eight dot one dot one to one hundred and ninety-two. Dot one hundred and sixty-eight. Dot one. Dot one hundred and twenty-six. The range of available host addresses for subnet two is one hundred and ninety-two. Dot one hundred and sixty-eight. Dot one. Dot one hundred and twenty-nine. To one hundred and ninety-two. Dot one hundred and sixty-eight. Dot one. Dot two hundred and fifty-four. Based on this. We can determine that there are five steps involved in subnetting. The first step is determining the IP address type and obtaining the default mask. 
The second step is changing the mask of the IP address to obtain the subnet. The third step is determining the subnet number. The fourth step is determining the broadcast address. And the final step is determining the range of available host addresses based on the subnet number and broadcast address. There are two formulas used in subnetting. How can we determine whether 192.168.1.64-27 can be allocated to hosts? This IP address indicates the subnetting of the class C address 192.168.1.0-24. The length of the subnet mask is changed from 24 to 27. Therefore, the network part borrows 3 bits from the host part. According to the formula, 8 subnets are generated. Each subnet has 30 available IP addresses. The 8 subnets include .1.24/27 among others it can be seen that 192.168.1.64/127 is the network number of a subnet and therefore cannot be allocated to hosts. IP addresses can be divided into public and private IP addresses. A public IP address is used to access a public network, which is a valid IP address. A private IP address can be used only in a LAN and cannot be used to access a public network. A portion of IP addresses from each of class A, B, and C address ranges are chosen as private IP addresses, which relieves the issue of IPv4 address space insufficiency. The range of class A addresses for private use is 10.0.0.0 .0 .0 to 10.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.